Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 12th of July. If I look, look a little bit worse than usual, uh, I just drove back from Seattle. So I've just done a five hour drive and I just rushed straight to my office to prepare the update. So apologies for not having a fun t-shirt on. Um, as always, got the chapters, so you can jump to any of the particular updates you care about the most. Just one new video this week, because I've been in Seattle all week, because it was the Microsoft start, the internal kind of kickoff for the financial year. But I spent a huge amount of time researching Microsoft Fabric. And even if you're not a data person, this is a fascinating technology and work being done to really make things a lot easier for the entire organization to avoid those silos of data and having to transform data between different formats based on, hey, is it an analysis engine? Am I running a Spark job? Is it SQL interaction? So I, I really would recommend everyone kind of understanding what this technology does. On to what's new on the compute side. So they've announced the retirement of the guest OS families two, three, and four. Now there's a PowerShell script you can run but essentially it boils down to Windows 2008 R2 is retiring December 2024, and then Windows Server 2012 and 2012 R2 retires February 2025. So you need to be getting off, you should be off of them anyway. When you think about maximizing your security and your protections, you wanna be running a more modern operating system because with each new version, they introduced not just new features, but new protections and security capabilities. And so the recommendation would be, if you're in one of these positions, don't just jump to the next lowest possible supported version. I would try and take that opportunity to get to something like 2022 uh, to the OS family seven and maximize that longevity of the operating system, but also maybe try and adjust your processes so you can stay uh, a little bit more current. I've mentioned this before, I'm positive, but Advanced Container Network Service is a new set of capabilities around better network functionalities for your AKS clusters. And the first is the network observability. Now this is based on Hubble, and it's gonna work for your Linux workloads, and it doesn't care if it's Cilium for the um, data plane or non-Cilium, but it's gonna provide you a whole set of network inspection and capabilities. So I can think about pod level metrics, DNS metrics, the level, the layer for connections, enhanced debug capabilities when you wanna troubleshoot things. And it's gonna get ingested by Azure Monitor's managed service for Prometheus, which is that separate type of workspace just for Prometheus style metrics but then it has a pre-built dashboard to help you visualize that in the Azure Managed Grafana. So there's a whole complete solution for that better network observability and being able to actually interact with it um, for your AKS clusters. On the storage side, so Azure Elastic SAN has a number of updates that are generally available. Remember Azure Elastic SAN is a fully managed service. It's built on the regular Azure storage clusters, but it provides an iSCSI target. So the nice thing about an iSCSI target is I communicate to it over my network connection, things like Azure VMware solution, Azure container storage, but even just your own workloads that want a block level storage target could leverage this. And so one of the nice things they've now enabled you to do is delete the unused space on the SAN and then actually scale down. So maybe I created it a bit too big and now I could delete the unused space and scale down the size of my SAN to reduce my cost. It now has diagnostic settings. Either I can turn it on for all of the logs that are available for the resource or just the audit logs. I, I just care about the types of customer interactions. I wanna log that. And they've also added some new regions where I can leverage the service. On the miscellaneous side, so last week I talked about the GA of the enter of private access and internet access. So internet access, when I'm accessing internet-based resources, that connectivity from my machine that has that global secure access client on it actually goes to the enter edge, where I can apply things like conditional access. I have different categories of restrictions I can do to really protect the users from being tricked or going to places you don't want them to go. And then the private access piece, again, from that same global secure access client on their machines, just completely transparently for anything TCP or UDP, 
it will establish that tunnel to the entry edge, apply conditional access, and then enable that constantly verifiable connection to that backend resource. Well, now they've announced the suite. So if we go and quickly just look at what the suite is, the suite is bringing together various components of that. So if I scroll down and look at exactly what that does, we can see here, so in this currency, it's $12 a month. And so what the suite is including is, hey, it's the, from an entry ID, you get some of those basic capabilities, but primarily what you're looking at is its ID protection, which is also a P2 feature. Entra ID governance, which is a separate component that I have to license even if I have P2. Entra verified ID, Let's zoom in a bit over here. And also the internet access and the private access. So you get all of these as part of that Entra suite component. Now you do have to have P1 as well. So you still have to have P1 to build on top of that. And then I can get all of those features for an additional $12 a month. So that is um, what is now available if you wanna go that particular route. So you can go and get that. Azure Backup now supports for its vault where it stores your content, I can use a custom managed key. So hey, I want more control over the key that's been used to encrypt that content in my own Azure Key Vault, rotate as I want to do. Uh, that is now supported. And also for Azure Backup, it now supports private endpoint enabled disks. So if I have a managed disk, if I want to restrict how I can import export, so download, upload, I can enable it for private endpoints. So I'd have to go through a network that has connectivity to the private endpoint, which is an IP in your network. Well, now I can still back those up with Azure Backup. And when I do the restore, I can opt to, hey, restore with the same network settings, restore to some additional network access or enable that public access for those operations as well. And then Azure Site Recovery now has trusted launch VM support in GA. So remember, a trusted launch VM is one that has a virtual TPM. It supports things like Secure Boot because it's a Gen 2 VM. It's UEFI based instead of BIOS based. So now even when I'm using that more enhanced configuration, I can still replicate it to another target. Maybe it's another zone, maybe it's another region uh, using Azure Site Recovery. And that is it. A pretty quick update this week. Uh, but as usual, I hope you find that useful. Until next video, take care.